Hello and welcome everybody, it's Karen. I've got another guest design video today for Pixie Dust Designs. And today I'm going to be using the tulip and the lily dies. Now, these are the finished cards I'm going to make today. So just so you know what's coming, uh, that's obviously the tulips on the left. And this one here is the lilies card that I'm going to do. So they're both a bit of a different fold. The, lily, or the tulip one is a pretty simple pop-up box though. So let's start with that one. So I've got a 10 and a half by seven inch piece of cardstock. Uh, and you can take a screenshot of this. That's what we're going to be cutting out and scoring. So I'm going to start uh, along the 10 and a half inch side, scoring every two and a half inches. So two and a half, five inches, seven and a half, and again at 10 inches. Now on that 10 inch side, we are going to put that up at the top and just mark from the two inches down to that first score line. This is going to end up being a flap. Now I have to apologize for my camera focusing in and out. It's terrible about that. And I, I just didn't notice it when I was filming. So there we have what's going to be our flap. We're gonna cut away all this long section here, right up to that score line. And then I just take little wedges out of this just to tidy up the flap so it's not so messy. And I find it easiest if we tuck this in behind. So now we're going to find the four and a half inch mark. So I'm going to rotate it so the flap is down at the bottom there. And now at the four, four and a half inch mark, we're going to score right down to that first score line. So to the two and a half inches there. And then we will flip this over and do the same thing on the flap side. These are actually going to be cut lines, so it doesn't really matter that we're doing it on different sides. So that's what you should have now. And now I've, I've got the non-flap side and I'm just pressing in at the two inch mark. That's just so we know where we're going to score to. So from the middle, the five inch score mark, we're gonna score straight down diagonally to that two inch. So I've got a piece of washi tape on my scoreboard along one track. And if I line up those points, so that's the two inch spot going all the way down to the five inch center point, then I'm getting that diagonal line. So you should get something that looks like this. So you could pencil that, but you're gonna end up needing to score it later on anyway. So again, here I'm going from the five inches at the top down to the flap at the bottom, right along that one track. And that's our scoring done. So now I'm going to cut along that four and a half inch mark. And for some reason, I started going on the other <laughs> sub point of the, of the triangle there, but here I'm taking the rest of this off. Now you want to cut out the score line. So just cut to the side of them. You don't want them left on this. It'll show actually. So here I am removing a bit of the score line that I didn't cut off in my first cut. And then I will cut straight across the, along the four and a half inch score line. And that's, that's the card. So now we're going to fold uh, these sides in and give them a good crease. Uh, the one thing I forgot to do here is to fold the center one, and it's going to fold in a mountain fold as well, just like these ones here. Um, so just remember to do that. Now that flap doesn't need scoring at all, but these, these points do. And so you're going to bring them back, and you really want to line them up along the right-hand edge there. So they're straight along that side. And then this one folds back the other way. and give it a good crease. So that's the that's the box card really. Now I've cut some pieces of pattern paper. Uh, all those sections are two and a half inches wide, so I cut just under two and a half inches. Uh, I put mine on the wrong side, so that's why it's on the inside. You do not need to do that, it'll never show. So only do the outside. I just was talking, I got interrupted and I wasn't paying attention. So. <laughs> but here you can see I've got a two and a half inch wide, well just under two and a half, and it's just shy of that seven inch mark. 
But what I'm doing with the point is I'm folding it back on itself so it's along the straight edge and I can crease that. And this is going to fit perfectly where we need it to go. So just make sure you're not cutting at the full height so you've got a little bit of that white border to show. Now on this one, remember, you have to turn it uh, and crease it the opposite direction. So here, the right hand side is going to come over to meet the left hand side and we'll keep the point at the top and then just crease this. Now those creases are actually your cut line. Uh, so we're going to cut straight up along that line and save those top pieces uh, because they are perfect for these little corner pieces. So you don't have to cut anything extra for that. It all comes out of that one two and a half inch wide piece of card. So you can glue those down. Now out of some scrap cardstock that's about three quarters of an inch tall, I have cut a three inch piece, a four inch piece, and a five inch piece. And I am scoring all of these a quarter of an inch in from each end. And these will be our flaps. So I've put some double sided tape on them and I am just going to curl these now so they will have a bit more dimension inside. And th these are the cross pieces that we will attach the tulips to. So I'm keeping that tape up and I'm scoring on the underneath side of where the tape is. Now we're going to put those pieces in line with that flap so that it doesn't show. And so I've taken the release paper off this three inch one and I'm placing it right across the center line and just pressing it down nice and straight across there and flat. And then the four inch one uh, will go right over top of that three inch uh, strip. And again, nice and flat. You don't have to curl it up or anything. When the card bends, it will remember to bend. So there you can see when the back is bent, it will bring back all its dimension. And then that was the five inch one right over top of all the others. And you can just press that those seams in if you need to. So now we can uh, remove the release paper on our flap and then just close this up. So quite honestly, I think this is an easier pop-up box card to make than all the square ones that we've seen and it has a whole lot of dimension this. Now on the on my mock-up I corner rounded the top and I kind of like that so that's all I'm doing there is just corner rounding the top just to soften it up a little bit and now we can start to put the tulips in and they can go on any one of those three cross pieces or on the back but I find having an envelope really helps me <laughs> because I often go outside the lines. So when it goes into the envelope, you want it to make sure it's gonna fit inside. So that's all I'm doing there. I'm just kind of spacing it so it will sit inside a five by seven inch envelope. And this one I'm gluing to the back wall of the card. Now, you can definitely glue it there. You just do not want to cross the center line. So I'm keeping that tulip away from the center line and within the, you know, the outside edges of that envelope and this one I'm doing the same thing on the other side and then I could start filling them in uh, so those cross pieces are only three quarters of an inch so you only want uh, glue on the bottom three quarters of an inch of your of your tulip stems and so I was just going back and forth with these just popping them in on different different uh, cross pieces trying to get a bit of dimension And so this is the finished tulip uh, placement. So I've just filled in with a few leaves, but I love how much depth there is with this. Like it, it just really is fun. It's not super thick, uh, surprisingly. There's lots of room to write a message on the back and that's the bottom end. So really not too bad. Now for the sentiment on this one, uh, I, I die cut uh, the enjoy and added that little happy birthday. Now I've got two pieces of acetate that I've uh, put together with double sided tape and on the back side there I've got the red line tape and on the other side I put a piece of foam tape. So I've removed the release paper from that red line tape and I'm going to stick this right up along that um, outermost cross piece so that'll be the five inch cross piece and I'm just kind of centering that and putting it in place and giving it a good press and then once I had that there I could take the release paper 
off the foam tape and then I mounted my sentiment onto that. And it's kind of fun because that sentiment sort of pops out with everything else. It sort of stands up. Okay, so on to card number two. This was my um, image that I was using for coloring in my lilies and I've put in the coloring just to show you what I did. I was using YG0000 and now I'm coming in with a bit of YG01. Honestly, only needed to do one of those pieces with the greens. But here I'm using RV17 and there's a little etched line of left from the die cutting and I'm just following that with that marker. And then I came in with the colorless blender, the zero, and I'm just going over that RV17 and it will soften it up. So if you notice the, the flower on the left there where I haven't done the, the blending, you can tell that there is a softening that happens with that zero blender. So now I'm just coming in with a Catherine Pooler ink. It's the Pucker Up uh, shade of pinky purple. And I'm just really flicking, I'm using a small brush and just flicking some of that color on from the center out to the outer edges. And then I came back with my Copic marker uh, RV17 and I am just adding little dots on um, along all those little petals. Now this is a stamen and I'm using YG01 on the bottom and I, I'm just dotting on the YR27 onto the tips of this. And then I came in with YR23 and I'm just blending that out a bit. And then I went back in again one more time with the YR27. Now the lily on the left I've shaped and the one on the right is flat. And so I thought I would show you how I shaped these in case you wanted to do that. Uh, I'm just using a small ball stylus and, and an old mouse pad actually. And on the back side, I'm just running along the edges of the petals of the lily. And that will pucker them up. They sort of ruffle a bit um, and they will curl under. So you can see it's curled to the back there. Whichever side you're pressing on is the way it will curl. But from the front, it's kind of a fun frilled sort of a look or a ruffled look. And so once I've done all those leaves, uh, I'm going to go into the center now with a larger ball and just press that one down and you sort of go around and around. I'm not an expert at this, but this is just what I did. So you can see the dimension that that's giving it now. And so then I just glued these together and after I had glued them, I took one of the ball styluses and just really pressed that in just to help reinforce that curved uh, shape. And then I'm adding in the stamen there. So that's the shaped lily there. Okay, so I've got a five by seven card blank and I've magically put some patterned paper on it. <laughs> and that piece at the bottom is going to be the vase. So I'm just seeing how high up I need that circle to go so the vase doesn't show through this die cut opening. So I've got my circle die there. I'm not sure the dimension of that. Um, but I needed to die cut that and because it's a five by seven card, I had a horrible time with this uh, because the seven inch width wouldn't fit through. So I took a couple of pieces of folded up copy paper and I put them in the middle of my card and I ran it through closed. And so you can see that I've got that circle impression there. It cut the front out really well, but I have that circle impression. And so I'm going to fix that. Um, on the back, I sort of took my bone folder and tried to, you know, get rid of that line, but it doesn't get rid of it. So I'm putting a piece of embossed white cardstock on the inside. Uh, the back will still show that impression, but I wasn't too worried about that. Now on that out outside edge, I'm just putting a little bead of glue and then I'm going to put that uh, foiled uh, circle onto that. This is the pop-up mechanism. So you need a nine and a half by two and three quarter inch piece of cardstock, and it should be thick cardstock. We're gonna score it at a half an inch, four and a half inches, and nine inches. So there you have that. And now I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to score it three quarters of an inch just to that first score line and at two inches just to the first score line. Okay, so only to that first one. Now on this side, we'll score again at three quarters of an inch and two, but we're gonna go all the way to the second score line. So here again at two inches, 
all the way down to that second score line. Now a lot of this is going to be cut away from this. So I'll show you here. This little middle part on the one section is going to be cut away and these two outer edges will be cut away. So I'm cutting right up to that first score line along those uh, edges and I'm going to fold those tabs under just so I can get a nice straight cut. And then I can cut little tiny wedges out of those two little flaps that we've got there so that they're a little bit neater when we go to fold them under. And then on the other side, I'll cut right up along those score lines. Now you don't need to keep that score line so you can cut it away. If you don't cut it away, you'll kind of have this ridge that, that sticks with it. So now I'm going to fold my one flap under and trim off these two. And you definitely want these edges to be as neat as you can make them. And again, I'm curling this to shape it a bit. It's going to come out to be that vase, so it's going to curl naturally anyway with the way the card goes, but it sort of helps it. Now I've cut a piece of uh, pattern paper to just fit exactly over that section there. And I've curved, curved it as well, and I'm just gluing it on top of this. Now, there are lots of ways on the internet to do this. This is an old card style, you know, fold. I find I like this best. I'm putting glue on these two little flaps and you'll see that this middle piece will now come right up in between them. It doesn't touch that at all. We're going to hold this down flat and you want that uh, the flap on the left there to butt right up into the card fold. And I'm lining up the bottom of that vase with that uh, embossed edge there. So really focus on that flap being lined right up with that edge of the card or the inside fold of the card and the bottom edge. And then you can just press that down in place and you really want to let this glue set up because it's quite a bit of force pulling on it. So now I put glue just on that top flap and I'm just going to hold that down and close the card right over top of that. And then I just let this set up. Um, I kind of walked away and I did other things and then I came back. Now when I open it, I like to help this along. So I'm sort of pushing that vase with, with my finger on the right there. And I sort of get a hold of that tab on the left and I help pull it up and over for the first one or two tries. It will go on its own, but it just I just worry that those folds are not going to hold or that I'll tear the, the paper. Now you can see that at this point that little vase will flap up and down so I've cut just a scrap strip of cardstock that's just wider than that sliding mechanism there. Um, and I'm going to put glue just on the outside edges of this. This is all we're going to use to hold that vase down actually. So you can see there I'm just gluing the outer tips of that. And I'll show you here. Uh, it's not going to be where that mechanism is. You definitely cannot glue the mechanism down because it will not open and close then. So I'm sliding this inside towards the, the bottom edge, or my bottom edge here, uh, and just trying to line it up. I was kind of peeking in the side there and just making sure that I wasn't gluing down the mechanism. And that will hold that up. Now there is not a lot of depth with this. When it opens, there's lots of depth because it just pulls up into a nice curved vase. So you can see that's the mechanism. You don't want to glue anything onto that. You can glue down below it here on this outer edge and on that little strip that we put on, you can put things on that and you can put glue things to the inside edge of the vase, but just not on that sliding mechanism. So I'm just lining up my flowers here um, and I've glued everything in place at this point. There's not a lot of uh, depth to that, partly because that opening lets everything come out. But when you open it, you have all this. I've added some filler with some uh, pink fresh. I think that's the dainty blossoms and I've ad added the sentiment and a few butterflies. So that's the card. It's quite fun that it opens up and it's, it's such a surprise. So I have that one extra lily and I am just going to do some surgery on it. I, that leaf was just going to be hidden behind the sentiment. So I'm just going to glue this down and that will be the card there. 
So I have to say I was inspired by a number of different people online who've made this card. It's been well done on online if you're interested in seeing more. Uh, but there's lots of room to write a sentiment either on the inside or on the back. And there's quite a lot of dimension there without it adding a huge amount of bulk I found. So I hope that that's given you guys uh, a little inspiration on how to use these dies. They're absolutely beautiful flower dies. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you guys are having a great day and I hope you'll come back for the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.